Hey, Kelly. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, got thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for giving back to the group. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. We we got the slides up here, but just walk us through that. Right. I'm pretty typical. Um, you know, I, I grew up, um, you know, believing, you know, or, or working on, you know, you um, go to school, you get good grades, um, work really hard, get a good job, go to, you know, uh, go to corporate America, you know, get your family, live within your means, you know, all, all the, the normal stuff that uh, as Americans we should be <laughs> doing in order to what we, you know, is successful. Uh, I have, uh, you know, married, um, about 29 years, uh, going on my 30th year soon, and then we have one son, Patrick, who's 17. Um, have a, a BA in MIS, so it was uh, quite a while ago. I'm an IT guy, a multi-decade IT guy with an MBA, um, and MBA is uh, was more of a, a thing to uh, climb the corporate ladder, um, and so looking, you know, trying to uh, be director or you know more of a uh, managing director and, and the companies that I work for. Um, the IROP is uh, just a, uh, a real estate um, um, certification, but uh, like multiple IT certifications uh, in IT, you have to continually uh, be on that wheel to uh, learn, just, just like in any industry, but definitely in IT, it's very, very fast paced and in order to keep up with the, um, uh, everything, uh, you have to continually learn. Um, joined uh, Lifestyles in 2013. That was a uh, one of those pivotal uh, years for me. Um, that was a, a layoff year to where my um, uh, job was outsourced um, uh, to uh, another location. So uh, it was like what this uh, kind of fell off the ladder there. Uh, climbing up the ladder, you kind of getting to a certain amount, and then you just basically just it's just like you just fall off. <laughs> <laughs> and you know we, we pick ourselves back up you find the other job uh, which I did you know and you start climbing back up that ladder again but it kind of basically it kind of um, hurts your, your well it, your uh, beliefs uh, start breaking down um, or my beliefs started breaking down at, at that time and uh, knew that um, with uh, some of the fluctuations that I saw in my 401k uh, which was that's what I would do go and and put um, monies into a 401k uh, on my Dave Ramsey plan that I had. And uh, from there, um, uh, with my, uh, I guess I was in a good state though with the, the layoff, I was able to find another job, but I had uh, low debt because I had paid off my house, didn't have credit cards, didn't have you know the, the car loans and stuff. We, 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 were, we were doing pretty good. Um, but um, it, the thing is, you, you know, uh, uh, we could do so much better, and I, I started realizing uh, that I really didn't own my time uh, at that time, and that uh, the time that I was spending uh, making money actively uh, was um, uh, not um, that much money if you really compared to what my time was uh, worth. Yeah. Um... I was going to say, you know, some people spend their life climbing that corporate ladder only to actually get to the top and find out that the ladder is is leaning against the wrong wall. So at least you realized early and, and got off of that. So, yeah, I wish I would have realized it a lot earlier. <laughs> but um, yeah. I, one of the things that uh, uh, was an epiphany is that as I got older, made more money, uh, my risk uh, to making that money uh, went up. Um, it, and uh, the risk of uh, being laid off or not in control uh, seemed to get greater. And then once you fall off that ladder, it's much harder uh, to, to get back up. Well, the older we get, there's, it seems to me that there's younger people willing to come in and do the same work for half the price. Yeah, so, I, also, well, I, you know, I deal with a lot, Kelly. When I teach out in San Jose, California, or I'm teaching up in Seattle, Washington, everybody in the rooms in your industry, and you're like, they can hire a 25 year old, 30 year old kid from another country for a quarter of your price. So if you get laid off one time, that's a little bit tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's usually about um, uh, one to four. So the the uh, the large, very large company uh, that I worked for last time, it was uh, basically one to four, one onshore in uh, U.S. at uh, headquarters, and then uh, four in in uh, India. So. 
um, that, that was basically the ratio that they wanted, and, and that, that was the, the way that they uh, felt that they could uh, make more money. Okay, let's, uh, when, when you joined, how long did it take you to get invested as a, as a passive, in, passive investor? Because that, that was your first step, right? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm a real strong type B, um, so uh, I'm really a, a numbers guy. And um, back at that time, we didn't have Podium, which, um, I mean, Podium has been, for me, even as a, as a, as a lead now, uh, Podium has been great as a passive because the number of deals that I see and the time that it takes me to, to see those deals is, is so much less. So um, I can't say enough about uh, that, that new Podium system uh, that, that has started. But um, it took me, uh, I think, about six months until I got comfortable uh, seeing enough deals in front of me to be able to completely understand what I was getting into and understanding what um, certain numbers look like. And so the, the first couple of deals I looked at, I remember, um, were great deals uh, um, back in that early 2014 uh, time frame. But I didn't know that they were great deals, I guess, if you, if you would say. I didn't know what I was necessarily uh, looking out specifically because I didn't have a lot of comparisons yet. Um, uh, on the numbers, the numbers all look great, but uh, is a, a deal in Dallas um, the, the same as a, as a deal in, uh, let's say, uh, Wichita Falls, you know, uh, th things of that nature that I, that I had to kind of get my head around. And that's, uh, that was very helpful for the uh, multifamily um, classes uh, that we would have, the, the once a month class. Uh, to yeah. where we go over uh, people's uh, deals. And, and just like this, the case studies, those were, um, so valuable. You would think that you, you only need to go to one and you, you see it, you see the numbers and you learn. No, it's, it's multiple. And when you, the next time that you go to another case study, you'll pick up something that you didn't realize on the first one, right? right. So, so right. you get like a fire hose on the first time. And the next time you already kind of have a lot of information, but then you're going to pick up more information. Right. So speaking of great deals, let's, let's talk about Idlewood Creek here. Um, so you bought yeah, this. this is the biggest deal I've done in my life. <laughs> Very scary for me. Um, we had uh, multiple conversations about it. One of the conversations I re remember in talking to you, because this is a total in, in uh, middle of COVID, uh, where you have a lot of hysteria about people don't have to pay their rent anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and, and all of these things that are going on. And I remember having a conversation with you one night and. Um, and uh, we were going over, uh, or I went over my numbers and said, and I said, Don, you really, you think I should go with this deal with all this COVID and everything? And, and you told me, well, have you looked at your numbers? And I said, yes, it makes sense. And have you, uh, ha have, have you done it to where uh, if you, if you uh, lose 30% of, uh, or 30% of your occupancy stops paying, will you still be able to uh, uh, keep the deal afloat and bridge it until, um, you know, you get past this and say, yeah, I've, I've done that. So we said, well, what are you, what are you worried about? So, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it well, was, I remember uh, that, how scary of a time that was, not, not just this deal, but that time frame that we were in, cause you, you, you closed in July, but this was back, what, three, three months, probably March, April, I guess it was, I guess it was sometime in April. I remember it was still a little tear, chill in the air and, and rainy the day we were out there, but, um man that, i think that was the first time i ever wore a, a mask <laughs> that was yeah. that day and everybody was right. real nervous and we were trying to stay like 10 feet apart uh, so very scary but you know when i left there that day i i was more confident than before going out to the property because i saw your tenant not your tenant but your resident profile and i'm like these people aren't going anywhere you know they were there were uh mature uh, uh residents there and a lot of them had been there for a while so let's talk about about what it is you know the 27 units it it's a great location uh yeah i'll let you tell about it it was i was very yeah, impressed the, it, I, some of the selling points uh it's a great location right in dallas on skillman um 
it was a, a, a property that has been owned by the same uh, uh, individual um, and run by that individual for the last 30 years. Uh, so, and uh, it, it was uh, tons and tons of deferred maintenance. Um, so, so uh, basically, um, I, it's kind of one of those profiles to where you have someone that is, um, I kind of I look at it as uh, you take your, you have a, a cow that's pretty healthy and it's all fixed up and then you basically quit feeding the cow, but you keep on milking all the milk out of it. Yeah. But that's what yeah. it, was. it was. It was a cash flow for the person and uh, they made uh, a lot of, uh, of cash flow off of it o over that amount of time and they weren't putting anything into it. So um, because of that, they had to keep the rents uh, very low in order uh, to keep it 100% uh, occupied. And at that time, it was 100% uh, occupied. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I- he, uh, took I, it, Didn't he build it? Wasn't he the build, did he build or bought it when it was new? Something like that, wasn't this, that the story? Uh, well, he actually um, um, didn't build it, but it was, it's a condominium and the uh, two buildings were falling into a creek. It's right off the creek. And mm -hmm. so uh, he had actually bought it basically for nothing uh, from the, the city of Dallas uh, in that he would restore um, the, uh, the integrity of the uh, building and then uh, build a retaining wall onto the creek, which he, he built a fantastic retaining wall. And everything he did 30 years ago was um, um, A plus, you know, way, way that to do it, you know, the, the right way to do it. But he hadn't put any money into it for 30 years since he did all that. Yeah, it's Thanks funny how some paid. people will, will, some owners will look at money they put into the property as money that they can't put in their pocket and not ever putting those two points together that, hey, putting money into my property puts more money in my pocket. It, it just amazes me that, that people, uh, particularly outside of lifestyles, uh, just don't make that connection. They they just they lose it on that. So you you came up with uh, nine hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars down payment, and that wasn't all your money, was it? Uh, no, no. So um, yeah, we got some financing uh, from the bank um, at that time, um, and that was about one point uh, two million at five percent. Uh, we got uh, eighteen months IO, so in interest only for the first uh, eighteen months. This is not. Um, what you would consider a normal agency loan. It's, it's more of a bridge loan. Uh, so right. because of that, I have a, a, a draw on uh, capital repairs. So as I do repairs, I submit it to the bank and then uh, they actually uh, pay me um, wh whatever those repairs were. Right, and so everybody needs to understand that the returns on this deal are by leveraging those repairs as part of your loan, that's less capital you have to raise. Because if you had to raise the 550, now now you're up to 15, uh, 1.5. Uh, is that right? 1. Point, yeah, 1.5 uh, million. So you you raise less money and uh, leverage that work that's to be done, and so uh, the returns are are boosted. Right. Yeah. The, it was uh, one of those things that you don't know much about. It's like on the uh, um, on the single family when they were talking about the hard money loan. Um, I did a, a few single families uh, before lifestyles. I never heard of a hard money loan, and so my cash out of pocket was always really high, and, and so oh, the overall return on investment was lower, much lower because of that. Um, once I uh, understood. Uh, the hard money loan uh, in single family, but also the bridge loans in multifamily. It was just um, one of those uh, euphoria moments that, ah, oh. so, so uh, that was one of the options I could have taken was a, a normal agency loan. Uh, right. Get it for a couple of years, IO, uh, uh, do a, like a five to seven uh, a year uh, fixed, um, even, and it would have been at a lower interest rate, probably around uh, 3.5 or something like that, but uh, the return would have been less. Yeah, and uh, you know it's just it's totally game changer when you can leverage the rehab versus you know raising all the money for it. So we can go to the next slide here. I I don't know if you brought this up or not, but 
That 950 grand, did you come up with that by yourself, Kelly? Did you bring that up yet? Oh, no. That, that, um, that's one of the wonderful things. I couldn't have done this deal. Um, uh, we have a um, uh, one of the slides. I intentionally uh, did it based upon the people that were in that had to be within my realm of living to be able to do this deal. This uh, deal, if I would not have done the two-day uh, seminar with uh, Lifestyles and I think it was October 2013, um, I would have never done this deal because it wasn't in my realm of possibility. Um, even It even took me quite a while just to make it in my realm of possibility of being a, a lead. Uh, I'm, I'm really risk adverse. So, um, and, but so yeah, yeah um, not in my realm of possibility <laughs> without my How many total were uh, it's 20, 22, and my uh, lowest investor was uh, 20,000. Okay, folks, so th this is what I want to bring up to you. When you a number like this, 950 grand, don't let that scare you. Kelly didn't buy this by himself. He had a whole bunch of investors. So everybody makes the same rate of return. So it doesn't matter if you put in that 20K or if you put in 100K. If you make it 10% return, they make it 10% return. If you make 100% return, they make 100% return. I want people to understand this because... Some people come and they're like, well, I can't do multifamily. Well, if you put in 50K or like the one guy put in 20K, yes, you can do multifamily as well. I just want to make sure to know. And thank you, Kelly, for letting some of the little guys in the deal. You know, the firefighter, the... Do you have, are all your people from Dallas or do you have people from all across America in your deal, Kelly? Do you have any from out of state, for example? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Utah, California, uh, Arizona, and Florida, and Oklahoma are all in the deal. So, so, folks, if you're listening for the first time, you don't have to be in Texas to have been in this deal. He has folks from all over. And I wanted people to understand that, too, because some people are watching this from California, like, well, it's a Texas deal. I can't get involved. No, you could have put your money in the deal, too. I just want to make sure they knew that. Thanks for sharing that, Kelly. Sure. Okay. So, Go ahead. Yeah, so um, this is uh, what, what we call a, a value play. Uh, I haven't started uh, cash distributions. Actually, I'm, I'm in my fifth month. Um, so uh, uh, we have, I have the exterior is uh, completely remodeled. Um, uh, the, uh, basically what you see there is just a splash of uh, when I was uh, trying to figure out what I wanted it to look like. Uh, but um, um, it took um, about, well, about, well, we got it done before um, Thanksgiving. So, Basically about um, 12, 14 weeks or so, we got the exterior um, completely done. Um, um, now this was a building that had, uh, basically we, we replaced about 40% of the plywood in one of the uh, buildings for the roof, and, and that's quite a bit. So basically you can imagine uh, how many leaks uh, that were coming into the uh, third floor and even in the second floor. Um, that uh, were caused by the uh, mismanagement and, and uh, uh, maintenance uh, issues. Um, and also there was quite a bit of uh, wood rot and all kinds of, of problems that basically people were, were dealing with only because uh, they were um, about $200 under market on rent in this area. So um, uh, the income was uh, uh, 218 um, expenses um, about 900. I mean, uh, 90,752, and so monthly cash flow is about 2,375 with an NOI of uh, 127.799. So my cash on cash return uh, for that first year is pretty low, uh, but again, the value price. So I can't go in on the first month and raise everybody's rent to what uh, the market would be. Uh, also. Um, um, I, I have to fix the maintenance issues, uh, the roofs, um, and, and uh, all the wood rot and all the other problems there within the property uh, in order to give some value uh, to the existing tenants in order uh, to start raising rents. So, t t you talk about raising rents. I know David talks about that. He just, in the single family, uh, he mentioned that. Tell us about raising rents on this property while this was going on. Have you... Did you get some resistance? I mean, we got COVID, we got, you know, work going on there, some construction. Uh, did you lose anybody because of that? I did. I, I, did. I have uh, a couple of vacancies because of that. But 
um, I have more people uh, telling me and thanking me for fixing uh, the problems uh, um, than uh, people leaving. So, I mean, people uh, were seeing, uh, especially uh, the newer tenants, uh, were seeing the uh, uh, building and seeing that the, the management of the building to where uh, uh, water um, is gushing out <laughs> or or the roof is uh, leaking all the time every time it rains and uh, there, and or or these uh, these old old toilets that basically don't flush um, and and to uh, replace someone's toilet so that it flushes properly and put on nice new flooring you don't know how far that goes yeah. I mean to, to their being appreciative uh, and I think uh, uh, what I'm seeing is people really don't want people don't want to live in um, a slum type community they want to live in something nice and uh, most people are willing to pay for it. Right. Yeah. And the best folks, product, best price. Yeah. And, and one thing I want folks, if you're new, you've never watched this before, you're like, well, 3%, that's not a very good return. There are different types of deals we do in lifestyles. There's one called a yield play, where it's in perfect shape, and you make money from day one. Molly, on this one, which is him being a super conservative guy, is doing a fixer upper. So there won't be immediate gratification. But about three years later, if you can double your money, that's huge. So this one, he knows that first year, you're not gonna make a lot of money, but by year three, where he's looking for his bang and his buck. So I want you to understand that's the type of play this one is. So let's let's show a before and after picture, because this really shows the folks watching the big difference. Because I, I could really see this when I saw your slide deck. Look at that, big difference. Couldn't even see the property before. Right. right. Yeah, he exactly. didn't know he had all those leaks until he got it. They got the trees trimmed back so he could identify the the, the rotted uh, siding. So tell exactly, us about uh, you could even see um, because well, one, um, it, the because of the overgrowth in the trees, you could not see this beautiful property. I mean, it just looked like it was uh, a nightmare. Um, even a security issue. Uh, is you, if you can imagine walking in there on a daily basis, um, um, I can imagine quite a few tenants would be afraid of doing it. And remember, this is Dallas on Skillman. So um, uh, I'm cutting all of that back. Um, and, and this was something that we did find on the inspection. We, we knew there was a, a ton of the siding that had uh, wood rot. Um, we knew uh, that um, we had uh, roof issues, uh, Had uh, we knew what AC issues, because we went in, we did the proper inspection, uh, we did uh, the sewer scopes, um, the cameras in the sewers, and uh, we went uh, to every every unit, and, and this is during COVID, uh, this was not an easy thing to do, uh, but uh, we went through uh, every unit and uh, tested all the microwaves, tested all the dishwashers, so basically, uh, at the end, I had a cut list of uh, what I was going in to do, and uh, and just got on it right after right after we closed. Looks really nice too. Before and after. Yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing. Uh, you know, it's an old it's an old property, so there's there's a lot. Uh, again, the plumbing wasn't taken care of. So, uh, like in this particular one, uh, that uh, was leaking uh, in that area, and that was going right down to the tenant below them. So every time they would take a shower, uh, the tenant's um, uh, uh, unit that was below them would get uh, water all on their uh, ceiling in their bathroom. So it's just just got to go and, and just fix these little small problems. Um, and that is not re, uh, replacing a, a tub or anything like that, uh, other than the, the, the toilet being replaced. Um, that is just resurfacing uh, the existing um, um, base, um, tub and everything. And then putting on new fixtures. That's it. A lot of the big problems you had, you actually went in and fixed it rather than just patching it. So that that's, you know, we, you were talking about the toilets earlier, uh, the toilets that don't flush. But usually those are the ones that just run all the time, right? They don't flush, but they run all the time. So uh, right. nice to have right. things that work. Uh, yeah, one of the things that was noted in the uh, expenses on this one, um, one, uh, they do no rubs. So basically the um, the, the billing back to um, the residents for water or trash or any things like that. So that, that's an additional revenue stream 
uh, that as we turn units, uh, we're going to be able to um, make out. But also, uh, because the water is so high, uh, one of it is, is the, the toilet. So uh, the, uh, these uh, real inefficient toilets, um, one, uh, they were causing, uh, because they were so slow and, and going out, I was having um, sewage problems um, uh, where the um, sewage line would get clogged up. So basically, you, you replace it with a high efficiency toilet, and it goes right down. And, and uh, my uh, problems that I had uh, months ago to where I was having to get plumbers out to uh, snake the sewer line because the things uh, weren't, weren't uh, as efficient as, as possible uh, are now, um, I, have, I haven't had to do that anymore. Looks really nice. Uh, on the bathroom, yeah. you actually had uh, uh, lights that that come on. That's kind of neat. I remember this. We talked about uh, some of these fireplaces that weren't really in that great a shape, and and uh, I, I made a suggestion some things that I had done on our properties, which was which was the uh, fireplace in a box. Tell us about that. Yeah, using using uh, your mentor. That's one of the things. Um, I'm uh, uh, for <laughs> even Mike and Alex um, uh, being in the uh, aspiring lead uh, meetings, and we would talk about uh, different things. Uh, I've used tons of that information that I learned from uh, those meetings. Well, on the one that that we did was um, just uh, simple. On this fireplace, we were uh, deciding, okay, well, we go in, we clean a fireplace. Plus, you have to you know inspect it. Plus you know, there's a fire hazard with it. And, you know, it's, um, uh, people want to, um, you know, burn less wood. <laughs> you know, it's not as big of a thing. Uh, I don't know if you've visited London lately, but there's some, I didn't find any fireplaces when I went to London the last time I went. That was like 10 years ago. So um, this is real simple. The, these electric fireplaces are about 260 bucks and then 75 bucks for the electrical. And you put it right in and you have uh, n no... Um, uh, issues with thinking that there might be a fire and you don't have to clean the chimney you just have to you know get everything sealed up it, it's a win-win for everything and it actually uh, it's a big selling point the uh, one of the things that has been uh, as far as feedback given to me on showings is uh, they really like that electric car that's good that's good I know that residents really like that but and they use it more they they'll use it more than they will the you know, putting wood in there, even the little Duraflame logs. And these things actually put out heat, too. Um, yeah. A lot of times they put, put out more heat than the fireplace would because no heat's going up the chimney. It's it's coming out into the room. So it's... Yeah, yeah it's, it's super simple. Um, it really is super simple. And it's a win-win for the environment, for uh, our tenant, and uh, for uh, keeping uh, the risk low of, you know, anything catching on fire. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we're doing here. Year one, you already kind of went through these numbers. Uh, yeah, so being conservative on our on our numbers, year two and year uh, three, um, I I have uh, big bumps in um, um, insurance um, and um, and taxes. You know, one of the things I, I don't control in Texas, I, I wish I did, is taxes. Taxes in Texas can really bite you. So just to be uh, super safe, um, I uh, did a 50% increase in, in taxes. Now, if that comes to fruition, uh, then, then we're covered. If it, if it doesn't, then uh, our cash on cash you know, re returns can, can, be, uh, can be higher. No, and what I love about Kelly is he's being super overly conservative. <laughs> he thinks his taxes go up 50%. His returns will be better than this, but the point is, guys, remember this one. It's not about, in the end, if you're new, all that not, up, 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 it's like mumbo jumbo until I break down the seminar, explain what NOI and all that stuff is. You just got to look at the bottom line. What is my rate of return? And you're like, well, a 3% return isn't very much. That's not what the big thing is on this. For this one, it's the value add component, which is what we'll see in the next slide, because that's what he's looking for in this deal. Correct, Kelly? That's correct. That's correct. So, you, you can so, see yeah. it starting to take shape as, as you have the NOI. It's more than doubled in year two, so that's they can yeah, tell more about that in, today. in the end. Where he's gonna have a 90,000 OI, so we'll go to the next slide and you'll see. Yeah, the way hey, no, 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 no. 
and a Y mix. Operating expenses, I kept it. I kept it high. Um, um, all of my uh, contract and all my expectations for operating expenses, I kept that high based upon uh, what the historical the last 12 months were. But um, my expectations are to be that uh, so much lower because one of our models is is best product, and so I'm fixed the roof. I'm not going to have any more roof problems. Uh, exactly. I fixed it through all the siding. I'm not going to have any siding problems. And every time that we uh, on these appliances and stuff, I'm just replacing them. So yeah, when you put I mean, new those stuff can go away. This man's not going to be using up his time anymore when you put a new AC in less time. So that will be controlled over time. Absolutely. But right. here's where it shows the big thing. Remember, you and your investors put out 950 grand. And if we actually sold it, you would make an extra 1.1 million on that 950 grand. Which isn't so bad, is it, Kelly? That's right. Yeah. So, so, so the point point of it uh, on this one, as we we talked about, is the value play. And mm -hmm. uh, on multifamily, one of the things that we control is the uh, the price of it. And how do we do that? Well, we we control the price by the rents and, and what our expenses are. And uh, that gives us, a, you know, that gives me an NOI. And uh, with that, I can get the uh, value calculated. So if I do great on expenses, better on expenses, and, and better on revenue, uh, then I'm going to increase the price. Uh, unlike a, a single family, which on single family, I have to go by a comparable market analysis on it. Exactly. You have no control in single family. If they raise the rent, nothing. But in here, because you're raising the rent and all that, giving a better product, the value will go up. There's a piece of crap when you bought it. It's a beautiful product now. If you decide to sell it or whatever your plan is, Kelly, your investors should technically double their money, and that's our goal. Pretty awesome. Right. Now, and, by and, the uh, way, guys, the mm -hmm. just so you see, you see how excited Kelly is right now? <laughs> that's how excited a type B individual gets. That's the most, with 100% return, that's how excited they get, just so you know. Take a picture of that. <laughs> yeah, it's just numbers. And for you, it'd be peeing your pants exciting, right? There you go, exactly. Because, I mean, over 100% return is pretty awesome. And, and Kelly, would you mind for the people out there for the first time, you're the one there at the property, you're running stuff, working with the contractor, doing all this work. Could you explain to the new people listening for the first time, how much work is your investors doing on this property? What are they doing? You know, um, they're they're actually working. I know a couple of them are working right now because they're watching this uh, webcast. That's <laughs> but that's about as much work as they're doing. I'll see Kelly, but all they did was put money in the deal, and they get checks in the mail once a quarter once he starts distributing. And three years later, they'll double their money, and it's as simple as that. I just want to make sure they know that that it's that easy to be a passive. Yeah, and I guess to click, get an email from me uh, once a month on the status of the property and all the numbers. Yeah, they can read the report. And, and Kelly, here's another thing I want you to, to answer for these folks. I know you have a bunch of people in this deal. You said some from like California and some other states. Well, like you said, of all your investors, I think you have 24 or something you said, how many of them actually went to the property and looked at it? And how many just put in money in, in the deal? Uh, one one has uh, gone and uh, looked at it and, and taken the tour. I have a uh, a contactless virtual tour system, uh, okay. and um, uh, they were they uh, went through it uh, for me and gave me some great feedback. Awesome, but I mean, how many physically went out there? Because what I'm trying to tell people, you can be California. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 It, you don't you don't have to go out. You don't have to do anything. Um, th there's there's nothing to be done. Uh, so for my passes. Um, I I usually um, do, well actually I do go out and see. There's nothing wrong with that, Charlie. I, I, mean, like sure. I have some people that go to every property. I have some that go to none. I just want people to know you don't have to if you don't want to. Hey Dave, I tell sure. you if 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 you just go to his website, you'll see more than you could see about the property by actually being than being there. It's uh, yeah. uh he did a phenomenal <laughs> job with. Uh, with the uh, online presence. He right. has an IT background. He nerded it up to the, which yeah, is good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he brought that skill set in there to make it real easy, uh, which which will get better traffic flow, which will get better market rents and everything by doing all that. Some of my, I have a lot of guys in the tech industry, they're very savvy at that. They're very good at that. Nothing wrong with bringing that. Old guys like me and John. Yeah, I don't know. But you know, that's the thing. Um, Different uh, leads will have uh, different backgrounds 
that mm -hmm. lend itself to real estate. So uh, IT works real well with the project management side and, and the, uh, the, the uh, marketing side, things of that nature. But then if you own a small business and you manage people and you manage a lot of uh, different things um, and, and budgets uh, and all those things, all those things fit right into um, managing multifamily. It, it is, and the tools that we have today make it so easy. I cannot believe, I think personally, I think multifamily is easier than single family management. I agree. It's actually easier to get loans. If I go to get a single family house, I'm going to fill out all this paperwork. In multifamily, I don't. That's why I love the difference. So. Yep. Yep. It, 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 yeah, it's night and day, and the software is so uh, tuned to multifamily, and, and it's just it's just night and day. Um, yeah, if you need to scale, you need to um, get rich. Uh, number three, I think it was. Uh, you can't get rich slow. Mm -hmm. um, the you gotta go multifamily. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm type B, and it's like the numbers make sense. That's it. I wish you time. You take the emotions out of it eventually. And the type B's take one step, then they can take ten. It's not a problem because it's just repeating a process. They understand process. That's what it's about. Yeah, let me ask a question. How how much easier do you think the next property you buy will be than this one was? Um, it it should be. It, you know, you take COVID out of it, where I'm going to each unit with a mask and making sure. You know, that that brings a lot of worries to you that are are probably the the fear, the false evidence of appearing real. Because I mean, I don't know. It, 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 it's in the back of your mind, but at the same time, um, I, it's hard for me to get rid of that stuff. <laughs> I'm well, real tech geek. Well, Kelly, you've done it in the, the worst economy ever in America. Yeah. A value play property, which is a huge fixer upper, during COVID, you survived the end of the world. Everything will be got easier after this. It's really will. Uh, it, it has to be easier. I I, I think that uh, it um, will be significantly easier. And um, you know, before um, I went through all of this, now it seems like my name is on some list. I'm getting a call from brokers now. Uh, one of the things is that with uh, lifestyles, they have the realty uh, side, mm -hmm. and they know how. Um, you know them personally, and they work extremely hard for you. Yeah, they're um, not a you. They're not a sell you. Yep. Right. And uh, I have, if, um, on the outside brokers, when I was trying to, uh, you know, facilitate those uh, type of relationships, it, it's not as easy. But now that I have a multifamily 27 unit in Dallas. Seven, you got that gold card. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Street it's like I got that gold card. Mm -hmm. And that's what's powerful for new members to join. You instantly have success because it's like 30 years of lifestyles behind you. Guys like Don Rao that owns hundreds of units, guys guiding you. The other brokers look at you different. It is it is a big difference. Yep. Yeah. So how does change oh, your life? Oh, yeah. Um, so change my life. Well, one, um, my belief system having, you know, that job with the large companies and, you know, retiring with that completely evaporated that was that was a, a belief that was hard to break <laughs> i can tell you because that felt safe uh and it was totally not safe and i finally i finally um um realized it but i didn't realize it until i started uh doing uh the passive income uh back in 2014 and seeing that i actually can invest in something have zero basically zero time in it and then get very good returns. Um, and then uh, from there, I was like, okay, let's be super conservative, as I am. So I just started my, my spreadsheet. I list each one. Um, I expect over time to have about 10% return. Yep. I think good. that's simple, right? And, and my, I, I figure I need X amount in order uh, to, to uh, live uh, on my uh, passive income. And I'm going to achieve that at some point in time. I haven't achieved it yet. And uh, once I achieve that, I, I'll, I'll uh, live on 50% of it. And um, I'll retire um, or I'll rewire or, or rewire uh, part two. I don't know. Um, I actually do enjoy 
uh, doing what I'm doing. Um, I'm meeting, um, I'm not uh, an outgoing person, but I, I meet good people every day. And I solve, just like in IT, uh, when I would solve people's problems, I'm solving problems um, all day. Now, I mean, I don't physically do the work, but I'm making sure it gets done, and I'm making sure it gets done right, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I think a lot of times uh, that, that doesn't happen. So, yes, I uh, quit my W-2 job. Um, I'm um, focused basically on working. Uh, I'm still working in my business, but I'm transitioning to working on my business. And I know that's something that you, you'll probably, you probably go in your class a lot. Uh, but and, and maybe you can uh, uh, um, talk about and that. But I, I love seeing this clip because one one thing awesome, Kelly, that you're doing, you don't realize what you're doing for those residents. Where you know they had this ugly property, now it's beautiful, and I'm sure you're getting people coming up and just thanking you for those changes. I mean, that is a good feeling, knowing not only are you changing your life for all your investors, but think of the result for all those residents. Where they had leaky toilets and then now they can you know, not have leaking water in their kids' bedroom anymore. I mean, that's a good feeling. That's pretty awesome. Yep. All right, let's talk about your goals. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the short term goals is um, four passive deals. So basically, I'm in a lot of passive deals and I'll, I'll have my, my active deal, right? So money money comes in in spurts. Uh, I have my quarter uh, payouts, but I also uh, get a, a refi. So I'm, my, my expectations is two refis this year, uh, um, which will have a certain amount of money. I got that on my spreadsheet. <laughs> and, and then uh, my passes. And I just take all of that money, chunk it back together, and it goes right back out. Yep. Uh, so uh, and it's the same thing. So. Um, uh, once I get uh, this one stabilized, uh, my short term is to uh, do a, another uh, lead deal, um, and um, and then um, as uh, my monies uh, come in, uh, don't let too much go to savings to where it's basically making nothing. Uh, I'll, I'll get into passes. Um, each deal, uh, like I have on my spreadsheet, um, basically every every year there's certain um, expectations for how a deal is going to do. And, um, and and I just add all those up. I know know pretty much how much I'm going to make passively that year, and then uh, I know basically on the year after or or that year how much I'm going to be investing. So um, I'm not planning for really the short term of, of this is pretty much a, a done deal in that short term. It's the long term uh, that uh, is a little bit more of a risk, I guess, or something that I don't actually know exactly how it's going to work. But uh, I do know that uh, it's achievable, which in uh, before I took the two-day uh, financial freedom seminar, I didn't know that. It wasn't in my realm of possibility. And, and to, yeah, to you actually have IT world in your 401k, you have all these different diverse plans. If I get up a million dollars, I draw down a 4% call, that's only, you know, 40 grand a year. But here it says you want 20 grand a month. You need 240 grand. So how are we going to get there? Well, we know by doubling whatever you have, that's our goal. So we get to we make 10% return, which sounds like your spreadsheet. So this deal makes 14%, this makes 6%, but it averages out to 10%. That's a really good realistic goal that yeah. is very realistic for our members. Mm -hmm. Simple exactly. it, 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 it's as simple as that. <laughs> and believe it or not, it's that simple. It uh, is. And, it is. and, and the, the great thing about it is that money will keep on coming in even after I pass away. And yep. that means I get to leave a legacy, which mm -hmm. on if I was using it as a 401k, I'm basically trying to figure out how to draw it down to zero by the time I die. Yeah, and hopefully you don't get stuck in hospice and they steal your house, that you have free and clear and all that stuff. So it sounds like you have a better path, path and a better plan now. Good for you. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so you didn't do this alone. Did anybody want to give some shout outs to? Well, this, you know, I, there's tons of people that, are help, that have helped me with this, especially uh, post takeover. But this deal would have never gotten done uh, with me. Uh, it would have gotten done by somebody else, obviously, right? But with me doing it as my type B, working at a corporate, you know, world and all that type stuff, in, unless I had certain steps on a ladder to be able to walk up and, and, and start solid things. So the lifestyles, training, and the the overall organization and the members' lifestyles um, have a way of thinking. 
And that's something you don't really get outside of lifestyles. I can tell you, I don't have that in my house. I don't have that with my friends. I only have that with lifestyles, like-minded people on uh, making money through real estate. I have not, nowhere else uh, that support group other than in lifestyles. Now, I, I would have never been able to change my thinking if I didn't have lifestyles. And then uh, Don has been a good friend and mentor for quite a number of years. And um, the, being able to just call Don um, when like something doesn't sound right to me. I had a, I, I had a uh, cutoff valve big cutoff valve, a three-inch cutoff valve that need to be replaced. And I do my normal, get get my bids. And I uh, got my bids and it's really expensive. And, and I called Don and said, Don, you know, this thing's really expensive. I don't understand. I mean, I think it should be a lot less expensive. And he said, well, um, you know, those cutoff valves, you know, pretty deep. Have you uh, discussed with them, just them doing the work and you dig all, you get your, uh, you know, $5 an hour guy, dig the hope. Yeah. And, well, and I don't think I, I said I, that because I don't think there are any five dollar guys. Well, well you know, fifteen dollar guys. Fifteen dollar hour guy, dig the hole, and then you have the that's right. Good. Yeah, but, but that yeah. that takes thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, it was yeah. thousands of dollars. That, 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 this, that, that way of thinking saved, and that was one phone call. One phone call to uh, Don saved me thousands of dollars, or, or saved my my uh, and also uh, my uh, passive members thousands of dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you did go with those ball valves, right? Not the gate valves, yeah. like we talked about. Yeah. That's ball okay. ball valves. Okay. Yeah, these are the things we talk about ball valves. So like, and Kelly, that's a great example of your mentor, Don. I did that with Kelly Simmons. I wasn't even a, a mentor anymore. And I called her up with her and gave her my uh, um, adjuster, and it saved her and her investors a half million in one phone call. That's the power of having a mentor, not down the road. It can be huge. So, yeah, I love that example. It's great. Uh, Jackie, um, she's the broker uh, that, that sent the deal out. So she sent out, out a blast. I, re, I, I uh, replied to it that I was interested. And um, I, I had uh, toured several uh, deals with uh, the uh, Lifestyles uh, brokers before. Um, and each time learned a little bit more. Um, when you go in the Lifestyles uh, brokers, they're basically on your team, not trying to sell you something. Yeah, it's not about business. It doesn't fit for you. Good. Right. So, you know, when you when you go on your first couple of tours and, and uh, the broker goes and looks at the electrical panel, you're like, okay, well, I know I should be looking at the electrical panel after that. <laughs> Normal brokers are not doing that. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but then you ask them, well, why are you looking at the electrical panel? And they tell you exactly. Well, you need to make sure XXXX. And so, yeah, you know, Jackie was uh, great. She um, and um, as a new lead or as a new to multifamily, um, this is uh, it's not a big group in multifamily to be able to break into. And uh, brokers want to a deal to close uh, on the opposite side. They're going to pick whoever is going to, to pay the most, but, but uh, also who is going to close the deal. Yeah, who can actually and do it. Right. And that, uh, having Jackie uh, on my team and Don, uh, that was one of the things that uh, was solidified the deal was that um, um, having uh, that, that backing. So I couldn't have done it uh, then without my passive investors. If I didn't have be able to raise the money uh, so that I could do what I'm doing right now, it, the deal wouldn't happen. It just, not. Um, so it's just wonderful. Um, and then uh, on the one vendor that I did list, this is a, uh, before um, takeover was um, uh, Bank of Bell, um, uh, a bank, the local bank that I use. Uh, this is COVID time. So uh, actually I was using uh, a broker, a uh, mortgage broker, and had a deal pretty much with a term sheet and pretty much everything done. But once COVID hit, uh, things dried up. Uh, funding dried up for, for these type of deals. And, uh, but uh, uh, Daniel's a, a lifestyle vendor. So I'll, when things uh, started kind of get a little sketchy around there, I started expanding my uh, going to the vendor list and talking to Don and Jackie. And they were throwing out, oh, contact this person, contact that person. I started contacting everybody. And and Daniel looked at the deal and, he, and made sense. Uh, one of the things is uh, Daniel's from Dallas, so he, he knows Dallas. Things are different here than they are in New York or California. The... Um, the capital that I was getting was um, uh, that I had a, a term sheet on and everything was from California and they basically backed out on it. 
well, California, you know, they're going through a, uh, it at a different lens than what we are in Dallas. So, uh, and then uh, Mia Davis, um, just uh, once, once you, uh, as I was getting through, it's like um, I had a lot of questions as far as operations. This is uh, 27 units uh, that you've taken all at the same time with all these problems. Also, um, I have uh, quite a few uh, um, tenants that are on month to month versus um, on uh, leases. And uh, how do you uh, approach that to start increasing? Should I do it during COVID? Should I uh, should I do full full uh, increases? And so, just a you know a, a meeting with Mia. Uh, and I don't, I don't think I heard her on, but uh, it was invaluable. The information was invaluable. It was uh, the amount of money that um, I probably uh, gained uh, using just uh, that one meeting was, I, I can't tell you how much. I have an actual consultant to talk to. Uh, is this the right lease? Is it written right way? It's, you know, what, what pet policy should I have? That's what the operation is. It's huge, huge benefit. So. Great. Yeah. Huge. It, 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 it's an enormous benefit. Um, uh, the mentors uh, can, uh, will get you through on, on, they can answer any question, but uh, uh, Mia is in like, I guess you would say the pits, and she'll, she'll get really down on the leases and, and every little thing and what software you're using and all the other stuff. It, it's just great. Yep. All right, you guys ready to take some questions, Kelly? Sure. Okay. Uh, Danielle, you want to come on and give some questions? All right, so I've got some. So I'm going to I'm going to try to do some targeted ones because there's just a lot of questions and a lot of them are very similar. Um, the first one I have is from Orlando. Can you explain the $72,000 per door? You may be asking so, what is yeah. So yeah, the purchase price was um, um, 1950000 uh, and so uh, in in Dallas, um, uh, well, in the 27 units, so you divide that and get 72000 uh, per door, so basically. And this one was an interesting one only because it was it's a condo, uh, but it's not a fractured deal, which means that I, I bought all the units in the condo and I operate them as an apartment. Um, uh, in uh, lifestyles, we do not do fractured condo deals. Um, uh, it's one of the. It's not in the box. So, but this one uh, was uh, a good, a good one where you, you own all. Of it. Next question I have is from Scott, and he said, "How much did you bring to the table?" On the so I brought 15% uh, uh, of the deal uh, of the cash raise. Yeah. So uh, definitely. Um, uh, uh, you have to have, uh, with lifestyles, a, a lead has to have skin in the game, what we call skin in the game. So, um, uh, and uh, you have a minimum that you, you have to bring in. Um, and I think that I, personally, um, when I'm dealing with other people's money, I think it's only fair. Uh, I know of outside of um, leads or, or not, I don't think they're called leads outside of lifestyles. They're called sponsors or something, uh, syndicators maybe. And, um, Bottom, they they don't have anything to deal. Um, they just uh, they're just there to uh, collect the, the management fees and whatever fees. Uh, that's also something that is um, if you uh, go by the white paper, um, you you have uh, certain fees and those are those are um, you agree to also. So next question we have is for Frank. Can you tell me? It seems like that's a lot of cash out of pocket. What was the re the lending requirement? What was it? I, I, I heard a lot of cash out of pocket. Yeah, so he said, Kelly, it seems like there's a, that was a lot of cash out of pocket. What was the lender required? They required 20% down. Did you have to pay the the rehab or were you able to roll rehab into the loan? I think that's what he's asking. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, so um, the 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 way that it, it, it it's entered this is a bridge loan so this is not like a agency loan to where let's say you do uh 20 percent um out of pocket uh at the very beginning um this one is a bridge loan so i have a loan that is based upon uh 80 percent of the after repaired value so um the um what uh, you do is you get an appraisal at the beginning and then that appraisal um, um, will work. They will work in once the units are repaired. 
uh, to uh, market, um, what is it worth uh, at, at the after repaired value? And since that's where I have a I have a much smaller, um, uh, I guess uh, you would say, um, what is it? Um, what is that called? Um, down payment, I guess you would say, um, uh, on the loan. But that's because I can do a draw uh, for all of the capital expenditures. And as I do a draw of the capital expenditures, uh, that gets back up uh, as far as on the down payment. I guess overall average is down. I'm sure Don or David can explain that. Well, the, the, easy, the easy way to look at that is he he had to have a down payment for the acquisition of the property, and then on top of that, he put his repair cost. So the down payment technically was a percentage of the acquisition cost plus the uh, the the rehab budget or the repairs. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, good question. So um, the next question I had actually quite a few people ask. They said, how did you find this property? So did you find it yourself? Did one of the uh, Lifestyles multifamily builders present this to you? Well, so, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's from Jackie. Yeah, he covered yeah, that. Uh, so, we uh i found it through uh lifestyle so uh basically uh the real realtors the brokers uh within lifestyles um if you are a, a lead and you're looking for a property one of the things that they uh, do for you is um you will you get email blasts and they'll say something is coming out uh, uh and they give you some parameters are you interested and uh, you just reply if you're interested and then uh from there um They'll send you information. Then uh, you, you look at it closer and and go go get it. Awesome. Next question we have is from Matthew, and he asked, "What was the initial occupancy rate?" Hundred percent. Hundred percent, and it was uh, it was um, one hundred ninety five dollars under market per unit uh, on rent. So basically, it was very easy for them to keep that at one hundred percent. Uh, you could put anybody in there uh, for for what they require. And, and they actually, would say, even with leaking roofs and and dishwashers not working and microwaves not working, they would stay. Right. But that actually goes into the next question from Howard, and he said, "How did you learn that the rents were 200 under market rent?" So you just uh, uh, do a, a comparative uh, market analysis on the rents. Uh, there are reports that you can get. Um, you can um, even use uh, Quest uh, to do that, which is an internal um, well, uh, lifestyles um, application. Uh, but uh, you just get reports. Also, um, I on all of my assumptions are double checked by uh, the bank, the mortgage brokers, uh, people yeah. with a lot more experience at looking at these type of things, and then myself. And then also uh, I um, went over this uh, with my mentor, Don. So all of those things, multiple people looked at this, um, and my uh, actual um, average was uh, lower than what came back from the broker once they actually did their analysis because they uh, pulled um, a, a report um, so on their due diligence, and I was still a couple of cents underneath what they did. But that was it was about the same, and it's just reports that you pull. A lot of times the broker will pr provide those when you're when you're looking at a property, Jackie, I think uh, mm -hmm. had that information that within a one mile radius of this property, the rents were on average X number of dollars uh, higher. So, and if you want to learn how to do that, that is actually something I cover in my seminar. It's step one in the feasibility process called a market survey, and I and I go through how we do that. So you'll learn that this weekend in detail. Perfect. Next question is from Bill, and he said, Kelly, is this your first deal, and how did you find your passive investor? So, yes, it's my first lead deal, um, and um, I found my uh, path. Now, this was before we had, uh, or, or before Podium. Uh, basically, I found um, my passive investors by meeting them in uh, meetings. Um, basically, um, not necessarily case studies like this, but uh, we have... Um, 
uh, meetings, monthly meetings uh, with other uh, preferred investor uh, members, and uh, you get to meet people. Uh, I personally know um, several of uh, of my investors, and then on uh, the other ones that are more remote, it's more of a communication uh, through email uh, if I haven't met them uh, personally. Perfect. Next question I have is from Shiro. What happens with the investment deal after three years? For example, do all the parties retain ownership? Also, is it a corporation? Uh, I, I just heard uh, what happens after three years. It just depends on what the uh, market is and, and what our disp disposition uh, is on it. Uh, that's something act actually that we will do as a group. So it, it's part of the um, um, organizational, um, um, I, I don't know what you call it, whatever the doc <laughs> document. Is uh, operating document will lay out exactly how he's gonna do it. There's voting rights to the members. So if you come to my cell I'll explain how, there's some called a PPM, there's some called an operating agreement. You know going right. in that deal exactly what it is, whether it's a one year hold, it, two year hold, five year hold, it's all written out in the operating agreement. I'm just putting it in simple exactly. English. And, and that's the thing um, with um, knowing uh, th these type of questions, um, I wouldn't actually, we wouldn't have investors uh, that um, wouldn't be able to kind of know a lot of these questions because you have to be trained uh, in order to uh, be sophisticated enough to invest in these things. And, that, and that's, that's part of what Lifestyle does. Um, uh, even on the... Um, the net wealth management side. Um, I never realized I was a sophisticated investor uh, in 2014, but uh, until um, I went over my PFS, my personal financial statement with uh, a lifestyles uh, mentor, I, I didn't realize all the uh, debt equity that I had in my house that was just sitting there. So as you can imagine, late 2014, what, what I was doing, uh, and, and I, I was a Dave Ramsey uh, follower. I had everything paid off. And, uh, but uh, it just didn't make sense. I get it. Yeah, it, it didn't make sense to have all that equity in a house that um, I'm making nothing on when I can go and invest it in something that, uh, from my belief, I can make 10% uh, on average and then pay 3% interest on it. Uh, I'm going to get the, the, the Delta all day long. And, and, and to follow up on what Kelly said, if you go to my summer this weekend, we explain. So even when they sell the deal or whatever, if you put in 10% of the money, you get 10% of the shares, you get 10% of the votes, you get 10% of the tax benefits, you get 10% ownership so you don't lose your shares or anything you get that when they sell you're going to get the same 100 percent profit that kelly gets on his share that he put in so everybody makes a return and we'll put them in the llc's because that was another question we don't do llp's we don't incorporate we don't do s corps we don't do c corps we do llc's and the reason for that is direct tax benefits down to you as an individual even as a passive investor so and i'll explain all that in the seminar in detail but that sounds like what the kind of question that person was asking uh, it looks like, I have, like one more from Daniel? I, was say, I have just a few questions uh i'll probably wrap this up here but uh be back asked kelly do you have a real estate license and how do you find your residence are you a realtor no 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 <laughs> No, no, not at all. They haven't been to uh, seminar, have they, Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Th uh, those, those are um, uh, great questions. That that uh, um, you one uh, when you uh, do the seminar, uh, you'll go over how, how do you how do you manage how do, how do you find tenants? Uh, that is a scary thing to do, uh, actually, in meeting people and dealing with contracts and stuff like that. Uh, but um, the that's one thing I was saying earlier with the software. Um, within Lifestyles, we have um, multiple vendors uh, that uh, you'll talk to your mentor or you, or you get in training, like just use the software and then you you know you can do all your leases, use the software and you can manage your, your basically your whole apartment complex. Um, and then um, use the software and it will uh, send out all your advertising and then uh, uh, from there um, people people call you and then uh, you show them units. Actually, I don't even, uh, I have uh, um, 
my system, I don't even show people units. It's, it's contactless, just like what we've all gone to. But I can imagine people that um, uh, don't have the resources to, you know, to be able to find out those answers are probably still showing, you know, uh, on a daily basis and getting stood up uh, on, uh, you know, waiting at a house all day, just waiting for people to show up that may or may not show up. Uh, I don't even do that. Uh, but, um, uh, and everything is through uh, the web. Uh, the, um, the person that I'm moving in um, uh, tomorrow, uh, everything's been done uh, contactless. Uh, I'm, I haven't seen the person yet, but um, they are, we screen, screen, screen. Um, I know everything about him. I have all his information. Um, I'm, I have no worries and that, that um, there's going to be an issue. Awesome. Oh, and I have to make a correction, guys. I sat there and said, and Kelly, uh, in that phone call, I saved her 500K. I got a message from John that I actually saved them 740,000 that phone call. So he had to point that out. I don't know why. <laughs> but, <laughs> What's that? He put it in Q&A, too. Oh, did he? Okay, because I, I got a private message about it. They had to correct me when I'm wrong. So just so you guys know, full disclosure. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for sharing. I'm sure you inspired some folks. And, Don, I, I appreciate you as well. You know, do you have any uh, final words of advice for something new? Come to my summer first time, scared, might want to get involved multifamily. Kelly, what advice would you give somebody new? You know, the multifamily is uh, for me at the beginning many years ago was not in my wheelhouse. It was not in my realm of possibility. I've mentioned that a couple of times, but I keep on mentioning it because it's true. Um, people uh, just automatically say no, uh, or in our minds, we automatically say no to things because we don't understand it yet. And until you, you start, I mean, we understand 401k, so yeah, we're going to go. You know, we put a bunch of money in and then we try to draw out to zero and hopefully it doesn't have a market crash, right? I think we kind of understand that. Uh, but uh, multifamily, uh, um, just back in that, in that time, did not understand. It was not in my realm. And until I did the uh, financial freedom and then on the, the second day, which, you know, when we were uh, on Sunday when we were doing it, it was like a bulb goes off in your head. It's just like a light. You just go turn on that light switch. And it's like, really? I can go and invest 25000 into a, um, a partnership and I don't do anything and I get 10% returns? Or more? Uh, that's, I, I can tell you that there's still, well, I do have, mine's all average. I'm a B. I, I know, I've gotten a lot more than 10%. But the, the point is, is that I want to average everything. I want to say a couple of them are zero, which I haven't had one at zero. But... I'm going to say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a risk, you know, but that, that's the point. And my point is, is that you don't understand it until you take the two day. You really can't understand it uh, until you start seeing those numbers and it starts seeing as, as getting into your brain and becomes a possibility. And then once it starts becoming a possibility, it will grow like a, uh, uh, like a weed. And you'll be thinking about it day after day after day is why am I spending my time at some job making X amount when I can put in zero time and make infinite amount of money. Good, good. That, that's exactly what it is. The aha moment was on that Sunday. It's like I could double my money without a lot of time involved. And that's exactly what the family's about. Well, thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate you giving back. And, and Don, I appreciate you as well.